Welcome back to our Manage Math. Today we're going to focus on polynomial functions of higher degrees. All right, next one would be uh, our objective. Uh, I will be able to graph polynomial functions and determine their end behavior and find zeros of polynomial functions. Well, awesome job, uh, Cole. That's good news. Drive safely now, okay? With this permit, <laughs> drive safely. Good job, young man. I do remember uh, every 15 minute uh, event on campus and uh, I actually remembered myself uh, twice uh, shedding some tears when I looked at that. It, it's real, so uh, I wanted every one of you to be very careful when you uh, drive. Drive carefully, please. Especially those who, uh, all of us actually, not just, uh, not just, who, just those who just had it or have the permit so drive safely please and be aware of others uh i need somebody to give all of you please give me a word from the objective pick a word from the objective and participate and put that in the chat or the live stream graph determine and graphs behavior polynomial all right <clears throat> a polynomial a polynomial, I'm going to actually put that here for you. I'm going to give you an example right at the top. Let's say I have uh, uh, 2x to the third minus 5x squared plus 2x minus 3. Okay, here's a polynomial. Okay, every one of these is called a term. If you're separated by plus and minuses, addition and subtraction, you have a term. This is the first term, second term, first, second, etc. This is all the way if you want to continue, obviously, nth term, if you have nth power to begin with. So uh, the degree is determined by the highest exponent. That's the degree of the polynomial. This is a polynomial of a third, of a third degree in this, in this case. Standard form means exactly what I just did at the top. You start from the highest degree all the way to the lowest. And coefficients means the number next to your variables. So in this case, for example, what is the first term coefficient? Can somebody tell me what's the first term coefficient? What's the first term's coefficient? <clears throat> come on champions come on it's the two that's very true so what's the third terms coefficient oh come on is that the same two no it's a different two this one is actually going to be this dude here so leading term would be the very first so it's instead of me saying the first term i could use the word first term coefficient there's also another word designated just for this guy uh, which is called the leading term coefficient so in this case leading term coefficient again is the two okay graphing transformation of monomial functions so i'm pretending here to have a function and i'm going to put the function for you here f of x f of x is actually going to be uh, x to the fourth power. Remember, today we're talking about higher degree polynomials. So we're going to mix uh, both of them up uh, to the fourth and stuff, and three. And <clears throat> If I started with x to the fourth, what do you think is happening to the child? How would I get to this child? <clears throat> Am I moving up, left, and uh, down? Am I stretching, shrinking, flipping? What exactly am I doing from the parent to this child here? Uh, use uh, the whiteboard and the chat, and uh, here we go. I see, I need, I need more. Here we go. I see that, Jordan. I see that, uh, Natasha. 
Ali, I see that too. I am moving to the right two units. And I'm moving up five units. That's very true. And I'm also reflected over the x-axis. I'm reflected over the x-axis. So don't forget these transformation which we talked about. That's why I'm saying today's lesson is going to kind of a cement these concepts in the previous lessons. So uh, that's what I do with this uh, function. That's exactly how it looks. So now what does the... Uh, <clears throat> What does x to the fourth look like? Well, it turns out to be x to the fourth has depends on the leading coefficient. Uh, so it might look like uh, if you're flipping x to the fourth, x to the fourth parent itself would look something like an m, uh, a w, or something like that, uh, if it's positive. If it's negative, it looks like a flipped m, and also or a flipped uh, u like that. So obviously I'm gonna if I'm looking here based on this here based on my analysis of this negative I am immediately thinking of the bottom two here, and uh, if you probably were to use a graphing calculator or Desmos, uh, you'll find yourself looking at this here. I have a negative which is flipping, so the parent is flipped. Uh, the parent is actually flipped here, so this is the blue one, and the red is a child. And you could tell that the red is instead of zero zero here being the center. The this this child actually has moved to two. If you looked here, see that too, and you're you're up at five. So basically, two comma five is here instead of the parent at zero zero, right? Okay, and uh, it says here that uh, uh, two units to the left and five units up. The y-intercept y-intercept happens to be here. And we did talk about the y-intercept before. If you guys recall, we had a t-table, a short t-table. If you put 0 for x, it's going to give you the y-intercept. So let's put 0. Bleep. That's 0. That's negative 2. What is negative 2 to the fourth power? You've got the power for the hour. What is negative 2 to the fourth power? Uh, Gavin, we're going to talk about the third. Just give me, give us a second here. There's some examples for the third. Uh, negative, uh, negative uh, sixteen. Uh, negative sixteen. How do we negative sixteen? Negative, uh, unless if you're multiplying by this negative. You're right. Okay. If this is going to be a negative two to the fourth, that's a positive sixteen. However, there's a negative down here waiting for you. So negative sixteen plus the five, which should give you negative eleven. So you are touching the y-axis at negative eleven, which exactly confirms what I see on this graph. Any question on this? Okay, let's move on. Uh, this one says leading term and end behavior. We also talked about this item. Uh, we said, for example, if I have, uh, let's say, negative uh, three x to the fourth, oh, wait, we just talked about in this example, let's say to the third. Uh, plus 5x squared plus, uh, let's say, 2. How would this look like? I really don't know how does this look like, but I know that they're after the end behavior. So how do I own good the end behavior? I have to look at two things. The, can somebody tell me what do I look for when we talk about end behavior? Come on, champions. Come on, come on. Leading coefficient is one of them. That's very true. What else do I look for? For end behavior. That's right. I, I really have to look at the uh, degree. Because the degree is going to tell me if the ending is going to agree or not. If this ending is odd. This degree is odd. Then the ending is not going to agree. One is going to go up. The other one is going to go down. Basically here. And then I have to look at the leading coefficient. This one says that you're ending at negative 3. It means you're earning down. If I'm ending down and I'm at odd with the other side, so I'm going to start this here. And uh, today we're going to also add the quadrant to this. So, for example, we're going to see which quadrant this is one ending. So if I have, <coughs> if I'm doing this here one more time, if I end here, this is uh, 
Which quadrant is this, by the way? Is this first, second, third, or fourth quadrant down here? Exactly, so it's going to be fourth quadrant. And this dude here, I'm going to start my graph here, which is, what? which quadrant is this here? Here we go. So I start at second and end at uh, at the fourth. And this tells me that here. Uh, one more thing, which we actually talked about last time, uh, we used two basically notations. This is more appropriate for calculus and um, <clears throat> pre-calc and calc, this uh, limit notation. So it's limit as x approaches, um, in this case, let's say negative infinity <clears throat> of the function. What is my function? Well, that's this function here of f of x. You're going to reach, in this case, you're going to reach positive infinity. So that's a notation that we also discussed last time. Okay. Here we go. Somebody was asking, I think Gavin was asking about the third degree, where this is a third degree here. And the one also that we just talked about. So here is a, a, a third degree with A, meaning the leading coefficient is positive. That means you're going to end up positive uh, in this quadrant here, and which means the other side has to be uh, in... Uh, the third quadrant where the degrees odd uh, which means the ending do not agree if you end up positive because the leading coefficient is positive that means you start at negative down here and this is the opposite if you end up uh, negative then the other one has to start positive here's another uh, picture of how this might look like is a squiggly line for the cubic function or this uh, two uh, this function with uh, two uh, uh, ma maximum and minimum, minima and maxima, um, and you could tell obviously that you're ending positive. Again, leading coefficient is positive, you will end positive here. We're talking about cubic, odd, odd degree here. So that's why they're at odd with each other. If the leading coefficient is negative, let's say it's negative x cubed plus 2x or something then you could end up, uh, you would end up with negative, which means you start with positive. Again, end up with negative, start with positive. I'm not really concerned about how the graph looks like. I'm just, in this case, we're concerned about the end behavior. All right. <coughs> uh, this one is the fourth degree. Uh, so this one is actually x to the fourth. You might want to jot this down. x to the fourth. And if the, uh, first of all, the degree is odd or even here? Even means the ending will have to agree, which exactly is happening here. <clears throat> so how do I know if both are going up or both going down? Well, you have to look at the leading coefficient. This dude at the moment here is positive 1. Positive. Well, that means both of them are going to look positive. So this quadrant, first quadrant, second quadrant, the, the function will end up in that in these two quadrants. And now today we're also going to talk about it being coming so close here and not touching, but here actually going through and here going through. There's some designation for that. We're going to talk about that today. Uh, what if A is negative? For example, what if I have a negative, the coefficient is, and then x to the fourth or x to the sixth, in this case x to the fourth. Well, that means both are going to end in negative. Or you could say third and fourth quadrant. And also, uh, we're going to talk about it going through here and changing direction, positive to negative. This also might look like this, again, a simple uh, to a U, uh, kind of a wide U for the uh, quartic, the fourth degree, when it's positive or going down as an M, uh, if it's negative. So let's take a let's take a look at some examples here. Leading term and end behavior. So describe the end behavior of g of x, which is two x to the fourth minus three x cubed plus x minus one, using the limits. So basically, what you're looking at here is a fourth degree polynomial. That's why we call them high degree polynomials. So this fourth degree. And uh, I have a leading coefficient that is positive. So what do you think is going on? Where do you think I'm going to end? 
Uh, I'm going to end both positive or both negative. I'm going to agree or disagree. Tell me, guys, what's going on here. Lara says uh, it's even, and uh, and uh, Justin says even. Lara says it's positive, and Ali says they're gonna agree. They will agree, and Faith says both are positive. That's very true. I don't know what this looks like actually. I I don't. It might look like this, or just like that. But they're both gonna be looking upward for sure. They're both gonna be looking upward, and if we want to write this in terms of limits, so this is the limit as x approaches either positive or negative infinity you could separate this statement by the way you could put them together both are fine of the g of x the function itself is going to head towards positive infinity so uh, uh, you could separate them in uh, terms of limit as x approaches negative infinity of the function it's going to get you positive infinity and also x as approaches positive infinity of the function you're gonna get positive infinity so two statements or one should suffice in this case okay here we go uh, local extrema and zeros of polynomial functions a polynomial function of degree n has at most n minus one local extrema and at most n zero or zeros and zeros uh if you recall the word zeros does anybody remember the word zeros we have like four different words being the same thing synonymous for us zeros does anybody remember come on champions don't wait for somebody to give you the answer you give the answers as well Come on. The word zero is referred to something that we talked about, which to us means the same thing. Zeros. Here we go. X intercepts is one of them. What else? Uh, I'm getting closer. Try again, Satar. Come on, champions. Zeros, X intercepts. And then there's uh, two others that we've used to indicate the same concept. Ah, Faith, you're getting closer. Where are the champions here? Where's Elijah? Where is Derek? Where is Ali? Where is Alexia? I'm sorry, Alexa. Where is Alan? Where is Abby? Come on! Where is Jordan? Yeah, here we go. Satar. Roots. Yep. And what else? Hello. Hello. Here we go. Solutions. Yep. So let's talk about this a little bit here. It says polynomial function of a degree n. So I'm going to say, for example, I have f of x is uh, 2x to the third plus 5x minus 4, for, for example. Uh, they're saying that you have at least, or uh, sorry, at most, n minus 1 local extrema, meaning uh, n, is, n is a degree here. So I have at least 2, I'm sorry, at the most, at the most, at most, 2 local extrema. Two of them. At the most, you, you can't have more than two, right? I mean, if the degree is three, there's no more than two. So uh, my brain is going, perhaps it's going to look like that, something like this, where there is, a, at the most, at the most, two extremis here. So, which you could see, one of them here and one of them here. And, and and since at the same time it says at the most n zeros i will not exceed three solutions for this cubic uh, this is a cubic function i will not exceed three so three 
at the most zero, three zeros. Okay, you can't have four. You can't have four. If you start with the three, your degree is three, you can't have four. So here, find the zeros of this polynomial function. Find the zero of this polynomial function. Okay, so I have to think about how do I break this down? How do I uh, divide and conquer? How do I uh, basically shed a shell on, on the cubic? Because I can't use a diamond for cube. But what we've done in the warm-up, uh, which is why we say the warm-up is very important, you could uh, s choose to factor out something here to chop down the cubic down to the second degree, where we could use a diamond. So who would think here, who would thinks with me here, uh, what exactly do I need to factor out to uh, make this guy look like a second degree, not third. Here we go. I could take the 2 as a common factor. I also could take the x as a common factor. For sure. So I'm going to take the 2x, open that, and that's going to give me an x squared minus, somebody talk to me here, x squared minus what? x squared minus 2x, here we go, and then uh, minus what? Yep, x squared minus 2x minus 3. Well, this this one I could diamond for sure, right? If this is equal to 0, this one I know what to do, remember? <laughs> Came back again. Remember this? What do you think is going to be the solution here for this dude here? Mentally, not even doing anything. Here we go. So now we're going to take this dude here and then find out what's going on here. So I want to talk, uh, let me talk to uh, Elijah. Help me out with this... Uh, with this diamond here. Elijah, help me out with the diamond. What goes at the top of this diamond, Elijah? And uh, I'm also going to ask uh, another person once I hear from Elijah. Elijah, are you here? Do you copy? Here we go. What do you think I'm going to do at the top of this uh, uh, diamond here? Uh, two, okay, so what goes at the top of the diamond is A times C, just like the air conditioning, the A times C, A, C at the top. So what do you think is going to go at the top, Elijah? Come back to me, Elijah, okay? Yep, Antonio Laura, A times C, that's right. Uh, Elijah, I'm waiting for you. I know your friends are trying to participate. But here we go. Uh, but I will need you to think a little bit here, Elijah. Once I broke it down to the second degree, this is where actually I designate my A and B and C. So now here, I'm going to say A is the coefficient next to the x squared, which is what? Stay with me, Elijah. Which is what? What's next to my x squared? Good job. And B is what is whatever is next with the coefficient of x. What is next to the x? That's correct. And C is just going to be the constant by itself, which is negative 3. So now tell me, Elijah, uh, what goes at the top here? What numbers go at the top? Yep. 1 times negative 3 is negative 3. And then I have negative 3 at the top. And uh, the bottom is the B. B bottom basement two numbers multiply give you the top same numbers add give you the bottom let's try let's play with numbers here uh, go ahead you guys uh, help me out what do you think these numbers might be negative three and one that would that work at the top yep works at the top would that work at the bottom yeah so that works at the bottom do i have a equals to one does A equal to 1? We're good. Just circle and you're holly j uh, jolly and uh, that's that's it. So basically I've got uh, I've got here two sets of factors. Remember you start from the uh, from the function to the factors and then the solutions. So basically I've got 2x. You could put them in, in parentheses if you'd like. 
and then I've got x minus 3, that's just the one that I circled here, and x plus 1 equals 0. Well, do we know what the, what the solution is now? Can you tell me the solution is based on this? Come on, come on! Yep, that's going to be it for this guy. Come on, you guys, don't don't let George do the the whole work here. Don't don't let don't let that happen. X equals three is another one. Thank you. And also, so x minus three equals zero. X equals three. Okay, so that is circled. That is circled. And finally, x plus one equals zero x equals negative 1. That's a third. I have three different solutions, which confirms the fact, by the way, that you would have up to this amount here. So I got, I have three. You're never going to end up with four, by the way. If you end up with four, that means there's something wrong. So this is uh, the zeros. These are the zeros of this function here. Okay, thumbs up if you're doing good. Thumbs up if you're doing good. Uh, I... So let's take a look. Are you talking about X plus? Oh, no, it's exactly, if you were talking about the diamond, I'm trying to answer a question here. If you're talking about the diamond, so let's take a look at the diamond again. Um, let's go back here and take a look at the diamond. If we're talking about this diamond here, look here, I have negative 3, and that's exactly what I put in my factors. This is just a factor, it's not a solution. Solution would be actually equating that equal to 0. Um, same thing here. This is x equals 1. I take it the way it is, put it in a factor. The factor is uh, solved, and then that becomes a 0. That was a question from uh, one of you. Did that help? Okay. Uh, this one says multiplicity of 0 over 0 of a function. And uh, I'll talk about this in a second. Well, I did allude to it in, uh, earlier in uh, the warm-up. But this says if f is a polynomial function and x minus c to the mth power is a factor of f, but x minus c to the m plus 1 is not, then c is a zero of multiplicity m of f. What is this going What's going on here? Okay, let's take a look. What they're trying to say here is if you have a function, let's say f of x, equals uh, x minus 3 cubed, okay? Uh, you are expecting to see this when you solve it. Actually, x is going to be equal to 3. But because you have 3 here as an exponent, you're saying that you have a multiplicity of this 0, this solution, 3 times. This solution happens 3 times. Because this is not the same as x minus 3, that's it, with 1. This has happened to have 3 as exponent, and that's why we're saying there's a multiplicity of, of it, multiplicity, is happening more than one time. Okay, so um, let me give another example. What if uh, something like this happened, x plus 4 to the third, and then I have, for example, x minus 2 to the uh, fourth power. Well, again, you have this x equals negative 4 three times, three times, and x equals 2 four times. This three times and four times we call this multiplicity. Now, they want it to be a little bit more descriptive. When you have odd multiplicity, there's something happened to the function. When you have an even, there's something else happened to the function. That's what they're talking about here. Zeros of odd and even multiplicities. If the function 
uh, has a real zero of c of odd multiplicity, just like the one we talked about, the three, then the graph crosses the x-axis. You actually go through the x-axis at that location. But if the function has an even multiplicity, for example, I have just like what I showed you to the fourth power, then the graph does not cross the x-axis. It barely touches it and leaves at that location. You call this in math, kisses the x-axis. So it kisses the x-axis and leaves. It does not go through the x-axis. So let's take an example of that. Sketch this graph. Sketch means you don't use like graphic calculator or, or tool. You just try to come up with a sketch. So first thing first, if I looked here, I'm expecting to see how many, uh, how many solutions. I'll talk about that right now. How many solutions? I'm expecting to see three and what else? Talk to me, you guys. Uh, give me a second, Alexia. We're going to talk about it right now. So I'm, I'm expecting to see what? Three times here, three solutions, right? Or this solution happening three times is what I'm saying. What else, you guys? So basically, if you were, I'm just hypothetically, hypothetically speaking here, if I were to factor this out, that's going to be three times, three parentheses that looks like that, which will eventually going to give me x cubed. How about this guy here? How many x's do you get when you multiply this by itself? That's very true. x to the second. So you have x cubed times x to the second. Well, you're expecting to see five different, right? Up to five different solutions here. Well, let's see what's going on. If I'm expecting five different solutions, the first one here happens to be x equals what? x plus 2 equals 0 x equals negative 2. However, it has a multiplicity. Multiplicity of what? Multiplicity of three times. This happening three times. Same thing with this dude here. This dude here happens how many times do you think? If x minus 1 equals 0, x equals 1 with multiplicity multiplicity of what? Exactly, twice. This is happening twice. So I know, based on this information, I know at this location here, at x equals negative 2, if I were to graph this guy here, or I'm going to try to sketch the graph here, I know that at negative 2 I have to go through the x-axis. So at negative 2, I have to go through here. The graph is going to cross. So maybe I'm somewhere here, I'm going to cross like that. I have to cross it because the odd multiplicity. And then perhaps I could go here to the 2. Okay, I don't know what the graph looks like. I'm just anticipating. Uh, or maybe like there's a hump here or something is going on here. Uh, like this, or perhaps something like that. And at this location, I'm not actually going to go through. Why are you not going through, Armani? Why are you not going through? Because the multiplicity is even. Even, you just kiss the x-axis and leave. You can't go through it. So maybe like that. Odd, you go through the x-axis, which means you're going to change direction. As a, You're going to change, I should say, positive or negative. This is positive y's, positive function. This is negative function. Right? The function becomes negative here. The y's become negative. So that's why at this location you change the sign, direction. Here you don't. At, at 1, I don't change. I just barely kiss the axis and leave. So once again, for odd multiplicity, you go through the x-axis. For even multiplicities, you kiss the x-axis and leave. And here is a kind of a, a sketch of what we just talked about. So it says here that you have zeros at negative 2 and at 1. The graph crosses the x-axis at negative 2 because multiplicity is odd. You see it here going through it. And the graph does not cross at x because the multiplicity is even. I barely come here and kiss and leave. Okay. Uh, this is again to cement the idea of uh, of uh, 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 
the degrees and the end behavior. So this example he says if you have uh, if you have uh, I'm going to start with odd ones. If you have an odd degree, and your leading coefficient is is positive, let's say for example two x cubed. Uh, I know that I'm going to end up where? Can somebody tell me? Where will you end up here? Which quadrant do you think you're going to end up with? This is very true. I'm going to end up with the first quadrant. That's this dude here. I will end up here. So if you ended up here, where did you start? Which quadrant did you start? That's very true. This is the third quadrant. So basically what they're saying here, if you will uh, uh, take a look at the both ends of the uh, function, you will end up in quadrant one and four, and, and three, I, I mean. What if, the, uh, what if the function is actually has a negative, so let's say negative four x cubed? Well, you know that you're gonna the part, the odd tells you that they're not uh, both ending are not going to agree, and also the negative tells you that you're going to end negative. So which quadrant is this? I'm going to end up in fourth quadrant. If you end up in fourth, where was the? Where did you start? Which quadrant did you start? In which quadrant did we start? I'll be very careful with that. Um, Yep, it, you actually started here, second quadrant. Okay, let's talk about uh, even. Even, even, will give you this. Well, again, I'll talk about the, uh, let's for example, uh, five x to the fourth. So first of all, this is an even power, and uh, the leading coefficient is positive, that means it will agree. So which quadrant do you think this is going to end up in? Which quadrant this is going to end up in? Yep, one and since the other one agrees with it, so it has to be also at the top of that, which means I will end up one and two. That's very true, one and two. I'll end up in one and two, one and two. And the last one here is when I have a negative, let's have a negative uh, uh, 2x to the fourth. Which quadrant do you think we're ending here? That is very true. 3 and 4. I would put an asterisk next to these. Uh, uh, you might see these on the test. So... Okay. Here's an additional example of that. Uh, which quadrant do you think we're going to end up uh, with here? And let me talk about number three, for example. Can somebody give me number three? Which quadrant do you think we're going to end up in number three? and yep one and three that's very true so anyways I'm gonna put the solutions here for you so when you watch this afterwards make sure that you pause do not look at the solution before you try it yourself and try to sketch it it's very important to sketch that's why some of the homeworks uh, will uh, will uh, you guys have to work uh, on the homeworks you gotta give me the sketch not just the uh, description Okay, the zeros of the function we just talked about, that zeros are x-intercepts, our solutions are roots. So this one says, find the real zeros of this function here. x cubed minus x squared minus 2x. How many solutions do you think I'm expecting here? Can I diamond x cubed? I hope we can, but we cannot. So what can we do? 
Icodominic squared quadratics, how do you deal with something that is not that? Yeah, I have to basically I have to trim it down. I have to make this guy looks like something manageable for me to factor. So how do I factor this? Uh, make it look like x squared. Well, there's a common factor here, if you paid attention. So this is x, open parenthesis, x squared. Uh, what is next here? Let me call on some of us here. Uh, J, Ricardo? Uh, Jenny, Lou? Uh, what do you think is going on here? I took x as a common factor. Uh, help me out. Uh, here we go. Jenny's coming. Uh, Jay, are you with me as well? I did. I've um, keep going, Jay. Oh, got uh, so it's uh, I see the last one, but gotcha. So this is X minus the two and this one i could easily diamond and uh, uh faith are you with me what what goes at the top here uh you close you close. Uh, what's A and what's A B C? So if A is uh, faith, what is A and B and C? I'm assuming this is what you guys do. By the way, I don't do A B C anymore. But you guys, it's it's helpful really to write it down. It makes perfect sense when you write it down, so your eyes would see that A B C for this one here. Here we go. A is uh, and uh, remember it's the num it's the coefficient. So we're looking for the coefficient, not the variable, not the x's. So what do you think that's going to be? If you're looking for the number, A is the coefficient. That's why I said, you guys, I really uh, would need to see, uh, would need to see the uh, the whiteboard. So A is one, B is going to be negative one, and C is going to be the two. And at the top goes A C. That's a negative. That's positive two. And at the bottom is negative one. And can somebody suggest two numbers multiply give you two? Same numbers add give you negative one. Somebody's asking, would it be, yes, you're right, I'm sorry. Yes, uh, who said, yes, George, thank you. It is negative two because A is one and two is, C is negative two. That is very true. Um, I'm glad we fixed that. So I'm hearing uh, two and uh, negative one. This is going to work at the top. Uh, no, that's not a, so let's reverse them. Let's try negative two and one. Negative two times one is a negative two, that works at the top. Negative two, that works at the bottom as well. Do I have A as one? Am I ready to circle these? Am I ready to circle these? So here's A. Since A is one, you divide by one basically and you just have the same numbers. So I've got X times, or you could put also X parentheses, uh, x minus 2 and x plus 1 okay equal the 0 don't forget equal the 0 then each one of them would be equal to 0 and then uh, x equals 0 or x equals 2 x equals negative 1 three different solutions here for me uh, potential solutions 
it's one, two, and a three. Three. Okay. So in this example, I was given the function. From the function, I get the factors. So let me put, I'm going to actually put that down here for you. So function, uh, start with function. Factor solution. Okay, function to factor to solutions. Could we have it in reverse order? Can can I give you the solution and you give me the factor and then get the function? The answer is yes. There's nothing. There's nothing wrong with walking backwards, right? There is some situation where you actually have to walk backwards. You're not looking for the solution. You're given the solution. And from the solution, you make that a factor. From the factor you give, you make that as, as a your function. And we're going to take a look at that uh, shortly. Here is um, this problem graphed. Uh, by the way, when you have solutions, like you're really touching here, so real solutions, real zeros, that means you are actually touching the x-axis, not imaginary ones. You're touching the x-axis like these three locations here. And um, that's how you graph this one here. Okay, um, find the real zeros of this. Find the real zeros of this. Here's another example of finding the real zeros. And in this example, I will, uh, okay. I have x to x to the fourth and x to the second, and I do have something in common here. This is negative two in common, looks like a negative two, and also the x to the fourth. So basically, I'm gonna say z zero, negative two x to the second power. And I'm going to find myself looking at x to the second minus 1. And x to the second is uh, um, a binomial expansion. This guy you could factor out. It's called identity in, in binomial, which means there's something squared minus something else being squared. It's called difference of squares. And it goes like this. If you have a squared minus b squared, you will end up with two factors, a minus b and a plus b. I would write this down somewhere. Difference of squares. So based on what I see here, I know that I have this factor, this x squared, and then I have this two parentheses. It's called difference of squares, x minus 1 and x plus 1. If you were to factor this difference of square that's what you're going to end up with uh, by the way if you don't believe it it's okay you could multiply these two together using the box foil or whatever you like and you'll end up with the one at the top here so it does actually work based on what you see here i have three different proposed solutions right either x equals what can somebody tell me x equals what here uh uh uh, uh. Could not be that. Cannot be one. Here we go. X equals zero. X unless if you mean, unless if you meant Ali the next one here equals one, and then x equals negative one. And then you probably were focused on this one. I'm talking about the first, uh, not the second. Okay, these are my proposed solution for this guy. So don't forget the difference of squares. Uh, we're gonna talk about this again. So it looks like an M, it's a fourth degree, and we're looking down M because A, the coefficient is negative, so it's going to be looking down. And at the same time, I'm touching at 1, 2, 3. I'm touching at uh, at x equals 0, at x equals, um, x equals 1, and x equals negative 1. And if you paid attention to this a uh, little bit closer here, if I'm touching here, by the way, this item here is going to give you x equals 0, right? And But it's happening twice. And it's happening twice, that means you're not going through the axis. Look here, look here. At x equals 0, I'm barely touching, kissing the axis and leaving. See that? But because these guys are, are odd, x minus 1, obviously there's an odd power here. So that's, that means you're going through it. x equals negative 1, x equals 1, you're going through the axis itself. At x equals 0, because it's happening twice, 
That means you are just gonna barely touch the axis and leave. Don't say, don't say that, Ali. You're gonna live for a long time and have fun. All right, here's the last one. This one says, uh, what if I give you the zeros and ask you to come up with a function? Hmm. That's like, again, walking backwards. So if I give you, if I give you the solution, you're not working for solution anymore because they're given. So you can actually work backwards. You're working backwards. So let's see what's going on. If I have a solution, so this means x equals negative 2 and x equals equals uh, one, uh, negative 1, right? I'm just putting the solution. So I wanted you to, to understand what's going on here. I'm going to start with the solution. From the solution, I'm going to come up with the, uh, with the factor itself. So a solution here, just like the one that they gave me, x equals negative 2. So how do you go from negative 2 all the way to this here? Well, again, you add 2 to both sides. That's going to give you x plus 2 equals 0. Once you are in x plus 2 equals 0, just put brackets, parentheses I should say, which makes this guy a factor. So you do the same thing for this one here. Uh, so x equals negative 1, x plus 1 equals 0. Well, guess what? That's your factor, x plus 1. Okay? So don't forget that if you have uh, uh, if you have zeros already, if you have the solution, you could uh, you need to end up with factor. Basically, you're walking backwards, uh, which is uh, listed here for you. So they have a factor of x plus two, x minus x plus one, x minus one, x minus two, and basically you have to multiply these factors to give you the solution. So how do you multiply? Which one you pick to multiply with what? Well, here's some again back to the difference of squares. Difference of squares would help you do that. So which one will you pick? I'm gonna pick the x plus two with x minus two because I know there is a difference of square formula that kind of saves me time. So if I were to multiply x plus two times x minus two, I know I will end up with x squared minus what's being squared again? The four because you got two things being squared. And same thing with x plus 1, x minus 1. Well, I know this is x being squared, and then minus the 1. 1 squared is 1. So that's why you have two, uh, two parentheses like that. Why are we using the shortcut difference of squares? Well, because it does save you time, by the way. Unless if you want to multiply this by that. Once you get with that, you multiply this two parentheses by the third. Once you multiply, you get all the three parentheses by the fourth, etc., etc. So you definitely save yourself time doing it with the shortcut. Now, once you get to here, you obviously have to do multiplication. So in this case, I would do the box, and I'll just multiply them out, and you'll be looking at something like this. Finally, you're going to look at x to the fourth minus five x squared plus four. Okay. This should conclude our lesson today. And be blessed wherever you at. All right. Mm -hmm.